wonderful crowd. You know, normally when I go to a, a groundbreaking, we don't have crowds like this. We have crowds, but not crowds like this. This is very exciting. You know, this is uh, a culmination of a dream that is coming true that we have been working on now for many, many years. I never dreamed that when I was working as a House of Representative member in 2004 and we called together a group of people in 2004, including the deans of the two medical schools in the state of Alabama, uh, we called them together in Montgomery and we said, what can we do to increase the number of doctors in the state of Alabama? And they didn't come up with any answers. So we called them together again. And so we had two meetings, and both times they said, you know, it's not our problem. I said, well, whose problem is it? If it's not your problem, whose problem is it? They said, well, it's yours, the legislature. And you're the one that needs to come up with how we're to produce more doctors for the state of Alabama. And so I told that group that day, our AMEC group, that later became our AMEC group, we said that day, well, we'll find a way. I never dreamed that it would be here today that we had found that way. But I am so proud to be here today and be a part of this announcement. I practiced medicine for 34 years in Tuscaloosa. I trained residents on a regular basis, family medicine residents. Two of the residents that came through my practice, and as I trained them, I, oftentimes I did not even know where they went to school. And as they rotated through my office, two residents stood out particularly to me. And I questioned them. I said, where did you go to school? One went to medical school in West Virginia. One went to medical school in Kansas City. And I said, well, what's the name of your schools? And they said, well, you know, it was such and such osteopathic medical school. But I recognized in those guys, they actually were the two sharpest residents that I had had. And I said, there's something special about these guys. I said, I know not every osteopathic physician is any better than an, osteo than an allopathic physician, which I am. But I said, they are certainly good, and they are very good residents. So that kind of got me thinking about this. And, and as I talked to the family medicine residency there in Tuscaloosa, uh, I said, how many uh, osteopathic students and how many osteopathic residents do we have? And we had three or four at that time. So that's how I, I became interested in, in osteopathic training. And as we worked with Dr. Holland and Dr. Baker and so many of the people with AMEC, uh, we traveled uh, at our own expense, my own expense. I didn't pay, no one paid my way. Uh, we traveled over the country visiting a number of osteopathic medical schools around the country, and we were very impressed with uh, what we saw. We're going to be very impressed here today. And I want to thank the people of Dothan, and I want to thank Southeastern Medical Center, and Houston County Health Authority for being brave against odds to raise the money that it takes to do something like this, but also to be brave enough to stand up and say, we're going to create a medical school that is not an allopathic medical school, an MD medical school, but it's an osteopathic medical school. To be brave enough to do that, and I want to thank them for what they're doing. And it is going to, we're going to see in this area, in the years to come, what will result from the bravery that, that we have seen. And, and, it, and it took a lot of courage. And, and I want you to know how much I appreciate it. But it is the culmination of a dream that, that we have all had. It has taken many, many people working together to get to this point. It's going to mean so much for southeastern Alabama. But it's not only going to mean so much for this particular area, it's going to mean so much for the entire state of Alabama. And there are so many good, outstanding students in this state who want to go to medical school 
But because they have a 26 MCAT, they can't get in UAB or even South Alabama because they don't have a 28 MCAT. But their grade point average is just as high, just as good. They're excellent students. And you know what else? They want to be doctors. And they will go where it takes to go to become a doctor. Personally, I know that. I know it because my youngest son, Matthew, had a, an MCAT in the mid-20s, had a very high grade point average, but he had an MCAT in the mid-20s. UAB kept saying, well, you need to take it again and take it again. I said, Matthew, I would never take it again. <laughs> I said, if you get offered somewhere else in the country to go to medical school, that's where I would go. And he was accepted to the osteopathic medical school in Kansas City. He went to Kansas City. He finished his last two years, one of the first students that rotated through through the clinical program at Cooper Green Hospital in Birmingham. He then was accepted at the University of Mississippi in their internal medicine program. He has now finished that program, and he is now a board-certified internist. And he practices medicine in Tuscaloosa and, and will soon be practicing in Birmingham at uh, St. Vincent's Hospital there in Birmingham as a hospitalist. You can do it. You don't always have to go. I love UAB. Let me tell you, I graduated from UAB. And I love South. They're great, great medical schools. And I'm very proud of them. And I support them in everything that I do. But we need more places for our students to go to school. And we need the opportunity for, for young men and women who, who wish to be physicians and who really love the people of this state and love to practice medicine. We need an opportunity for them to do that. And we're going to have that here in southeast Alabama. And I just want to thank all of you who have been involved in that. We're going to continue this process. We're going to continue to support you. I have done that all the way through much to the chagrin of some in the legislature. But let me point out one person here that helped me tremendously, and, and you all know him, and that's Joe Carruthers. Raise your hand, Joe. Joe Carruthers. <laughs> Joe served on the Education Appropriations Committee with me, and every year we would get in the budget something called Medical School Without Walls. And for, since 2004, we've put that in the budget. And this last year, Paul Lee, Paul, raise your hand back there. Paul has been helping us do the same thing as we have continued to do this. I was working on the education budget today, and I put in the budget today $800,000 to continue this process of AMAC with some scholarships and some things that will help Help this program continue until it can co become completely self-sustaining, which it will at some point, and that will be in the next two or three years. Then it will not take state dollars. No one can complain about it because it will all be private. But this is a great thing today. This is great for this area, and thank you all for what you all are doing here. And, and I just want to tell everyone here today that I am so proud to be the little part that I've played in it over these years, I am, I am just so proud to see what is happening today. So God bless you all, and thank you for letting me come down today. <laughs>